Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today's project, or well, t tonight's project, is going to be putting my pistons and my rods in the block. Uh, you're going to need a couple tools to help you out along the way. This would be a piston ring pliers, I guess is what you would call them. They're real cheap. You can get them off eBay for like four bucks. This fancy piece of crap, uh, it's a piston ring filer. I've probably already talked about it in one of my other videos. It just files the end gap on your piston rings. Like 60 bucks is pretty much the cheapest I found it. <laughs> You'll use it one time and that's it. And it's just going to sit in your toolbox. But nonetheless, you need it to do it right. And then you also need a ring compressor so that you can get the piston into the block. Alright, so I've already got all my, my pistons coated. I did that in another video. I'll post a link somewhere around here. As you see, they're coated. They look good. They've cured. They went through the oven and everything. Alright, I apologize if the angle ain't as beautiful as I can get it. My son removed some of the screws out of my tripod so it doesn't exactly hold its position very well. But, anyways. Two hours later. Yep. Sorry, I thought you were recording. I am. Now, how do you feel? I hear the peak. All right. Okay, I'm going to mark all the, I'm going to go ahead and label all these little boxes of rings. These are the Wisco Sins, you know, you know the, the ring sets, I guess, all in one. I'm going to go ahead and label them one, two, three, four, uh, starting with, you know, this being one, two, three, four. On the, let's see, what is that? That's the, the timing chain side. That's what's, that's which way I'm going to go. One, two, three. Because when you gap them, you're going to have to gap them per bore. Also, another tool you'll need that I didn't mention would be feeler gauges. And I do have a set, I swear. Here we go. They're a little bit crusty. Yep, yep. Well, of course, as it normally goes for me, something's not right. The piston rings, the, the ring set that they sent with me, which you know, is what I ordered, is the 87 millimeter rings. Uh, in order to get the suggested ring gap, um, I, I'm going to have to go with larger size piston rings. I'm going to go with a 87.5 and then file them down to whatever I need on here. So. I guess we'll cut to whenever they come in. Okay, well, I finally got my pistons, my new piston rings in. The uh, 87.5 right there. I've already done the first set, and uh, what it looks like I'm going to actually do is go with the top and second ring from the 87s, uh, 80, 87.5s, and then actually go with the oil rings um uh, from the uh, 87 millimeters um so that way i don't have to file the shit out of the the oil rings as well um because they, they don't have to be exact from what i'm reading but i got my measurements still for the end gaps um so yeah here is my ring filer as you can see basically i got it set up this thing is really really freaking slow doing it by hand so i just got it to where i can stick my drill on the end here go to town but anyways so getting started on the second set let me go ahead and close this first set make sure they're all in there all 
Oh shit, actually that was the second set. Durr. Alright, anyways. So this is the top ring, the silver one. The black one that has a bevel on it is the bottom ring. Well, not the bottom ring, but the second ring. And this one also has, I don't think I'll ever get it to focus. Let's see. Oh well, terrible lighting. Anyways, it's got a little marking on the top. So, I'm gonna stick that in the block. Okay, now it's in there. As you can see, with my finger out of the way, 87s are way too big, but that's what I got the in the ring gap filer for. So I'm gonna start working on that. Uh, obviously, I can't put a feeler gauge in there yet. This is the one I use for the top room. Okay. And like I was saying, I got my drill and everything hooked up. This is how you use the ring gap. You gotta, that's why you gotta use this tool so that you can make sure you line it up perfectly so your end gaps don't end up like. I have a diagram. There you go. Good, bad. Now you also only want to file on one side. There we go. So I'm going to be filing on this side, and you want to file towards the inside of the piston. You don't want to file towards the outside, they said it might mess up the coating that's on the outer side of it. So, yep, I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. thousand years later well that took forever as you can see it looks like I took a good chunk out of the uh, piston ring grinder there I don't know what the deal is with all that play but nonetheless I grinded it away so this thing's a piece of junk I wouldn't recommend buying the cheapest piston ring filer you can buy but anyway so now I'm done finally I think it took maybe a total of four hours to grind all the piston rings down that was a pain in the dick anyway so I've already got one piston ring on because uh, I was using that to make sure I lined up whenever I was measuring the, the end gap so I'm gonna put the other piston rings on and label the pistons alright so for the Wiseco pistons uh, you will have a number on them I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in good enough or get it to focus but there'll be a, a number, a marking, a letter, anything, and that will be the side that faces up. The shinier ring, it goes on top. It's usually a little bit thinner. Nope. Then you have your thicker, slightly thicker black ring. Um, you can usually feel that it's a bit sturdier. Again, it's going to have some lettering or numbering um, or something indicating, uh, maybe even a dot that indicates that side is pointed up. Um, and it's got a little bit of a bevel. I doubt you'll be able to see it, but it's got a little bit of a bevel on the bottom end. That's the second piston ring from the top down. That's how I'm starting. First from the top, second, and then these are the oil rings. So they basically get sandwiched in there like so. Um, and you're going to have to clock the gaps. Uh, according to these, I believe it is 45 for each gap. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and show you one piston. I should be able to get the hang of it. Uh, they've got a little chart on here that shows you exactly where the gaps are supposed to be. Uh, the first one you wanna put on is the, was this, the oil ring expander. Obviously you don't need the pliers with that. Um, and you wanna make sure the ends are buttoned together. You don't want them overlapping with this, with this one. Uh, and the gap's supposed to be straight to the back. Now the bottom one, the gap is supposed to be at about that direction. And again with these the smaller or thinner rings you don't have to use the pliers. A lot of people would recommend you don't use the pliers, but uh, I found them quite helpful when it comes to the, the larger rings. 
And you want to make sure it gets on the bottom, check it all the way around, check your gap, and then move on to the next one. The next one, the top oil rail uh, ring is going to go right about there. Hopefully my head's not in the way. There we go. Now again, you gotta fix the gap. There we go. All right, check this oil one again. Line it back up. Gotta pick the clip. Perfect. All right. Next goes the black ring again. The little indicator will be up. That'll be the upside. The gap. I guess the, technically the second compression ring, it will have a gap right there on the side. Top compression ring will be on that side. Alrighty, the next one, the last one again, indicator of writing the dot, numbers, go to the top, and the gap is on the exact opposite side. Beautiful. Alright, I'm going to check all my gaps again. Yep, 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 all right, and that is done. We're going to label it numero uno. That's number one for people that don't speak Spanish. <laughs>